What's going on YouTube? Don here from Nova Spirit, and today we are finally going to do a network attached storage, NAS or NAS for short, on the Raspberry Pi 2. So let's get started. Alright guys, so for those of you who already have Raspbian installed in their Raspberry Pi 2, you could probably skip forward another minute or two. But for the, those who are just new and just uh, joining this channel now, uh, thank you. And uh, I am going to actually walk through the whole thing of installing Raspbian into your Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to need some software. Uh, we're actually going to need the operating system itself. And to get that, it's at raspberrypi.org's website. And I'm going to leave all the links in the description below. So you don't have to worry about trying to see my screen and grabbing it from there. Now, after you download this, which I already did, uh, after you download this, we're going to need Win32 Disk Imager. And again, I'm going to leave the links in the description. Don't worry about it here. Don't have to like zoom in to grab the um, link. You're going to have to download um, Win32 Disk Imager. And with those combined, now your Windows could actually load the operating system into the SD card. Then we will place the SD card into um, a Raspberry Pi 2. Start off, we're running Disk WinDisk32 Imager. Yes, I got that right. Nailed it. And um, we're going to have to choose the device that we're going to install our operating system on. Uh, funny enough, I did not stick my memory card into the slot yet. So let me do that right now. Oh, it's going to be an F. Let's start this up again so I could refresh. F disk. All right. Next thing, we're going to load the image that we just downloaded. And it's on my desktop, Raspbian. Open that up, and we're going to hit write. And that's it. It's going to load the whole operating system into the SD card. And um, next thing you do is just pop it into your Raspberry Pi 2. I'm going to fast forward this. All right, guys, and we're back. Now that everything's written into the SD card, um, we're just gonna have to close this. We're done with this. Okay, what's what's what's? Why is it not letting me close? Oh, okay, that was a little hidden message behind there. Okay, now we close this, and. Uh, we're going to have to find our IP address to our Raspberry Pi. And there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I usually go through my router. So uh, once I go through my router, I can find my IP list. Actually, I'm not going to show it. Um, every router has its own different ways of doing it. Um, I'm pretty sure if you enter your router, you'll be able to find it that way too. But the easiest way is to go into your router, look up client list or DHCP list, and it'll pop up all the stuff. And one should say Raspbian. And... Um, I'm pretty sure what I know I know my IP address already okay so next program we're gonna need is putty and I'm gonna leave a link in the descriptions below and putty is a program that allows us to use a Windows PC and SSH into our server so because I know the IP already I am just gonna enter and it should say, since it's the first time, it's going to be like, okay, blah, 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 you have SSH key, except the username is always Pi. The default username is always Pi. And the default password is Raspberry. Now that we entered our Raspberry Pi, uh, the first step you have to do is actually sudo raspi, raspi, 
Config. It's actually written right over here up on top. I'm going to leave all these little commands out in the description below. That way you could also follow it by reading the descriptions. Now we're going to expand the file system. When they first load it, it's going to be as small as possible. I think it's a one gig um, uh, file space or something like that. So I'm going to expand the file system and this will allow me to use the full space. So I have a 8 gig SD card in there and it will expand it all the way to 8 gigs. Next, you could change your user password. I would. It's recommended because the default password is Raspberry. I already told the world. Everyone knows now, so might as well just change it to something else. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we can actually we don't need anything else because it's going to be um, it's called headless. We're not plugging any monitors into it. So now that we have everything done, I'm going to hit finish. It's going to ask me to reboot. And that's going to go down. See? Unexpectedly closed network connection. I am actually going to restart this session. By right clicking on the title bar, you can actually just hit restart session. It's actually going to try to reconnect to the same IP address. That way we don't have to go back into PuTTY. Just, PuTTY's already open. Why not? Login as Pi. Password is the new password that we just put in. And now we should update our repositories. So sudo app get update. And what repositories are is um, basically it's like an app store for Ubuntu. And all the, all the new apps and all the new software, all the updates are stored in these repositories. By doing sudo app get update, you're updating the repository list which every time when you install software, you're going to be getting the newest version. After we run the update uh, and we know that we have the newest list possible, we're going to get the newest version. Then we're going to start loading in the software. It's going to get a little tough because um, next is going to be a whole bunch of app gets that I'm going to be putting in. Again, I'm going to leave all the links in the description. I mean, leave all the commands in the description below and then you get to follow along. I'm going to close this out. We don't need that anymore we don't need this anymore but what I do want to show you guys is this webmin and webmin is what we're going to be installing to control our uh, network attached storage device or network attached storage our NAS server instead of going into the command lines and actually editing all the properties everything's going to be web interface we could just type in the IP address up on the top get into a Raspberry Pi and basically control our whole Raspberry Pi that way. Alright, now that everything's updated, uh, right, we're going to have to start grabbing our list of programs. And in this we're going to be sudoing app get install a bunch of stuff. Perl, uh, app version, open SSL, stuff like that. A, a bunch of stuff. Uh, like I said, everything will be in the descriptions. I'm going to hit yes, enter, let that install. Hopefully it doesn't take a while. I'm actually going to expand this and uh, hopefully this should be better viewing experience. Let me see. Oh, it's too late for me to change the font. You know, next time I'm going to remember that. I'm gonna make my um, putty the font bigger so when people are watching this it's easier to follow along. Mental note, I'll remember next time. If I don't just remind me in the comments. Alright while that's taking time we're gonna have to look for web admin. Webmin, sorry. And let's look for Debian package. And it goes straight to SourceForge, so we should be good with this. I like this server, so what I'm going to be doing is clicking on that server, right clicking, copy the link, and in my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to wget dash output dash o webmin dot dib and then paste the link. Hit enter.
Uh, next thing we're going to do is d sudo super user dpkg dash i web min dot deb. It's going to read the contents of the packages and install it into our uh, you Debian server. Our Raspberry Pi, our Raspbian, our Debian. Alright, and we're back. Uh, it installed. And you see, I could actually go into https colon slash slash raspberry pi colon 10,000. Now, um, it's, our device is not called Ras it is a raspberry pi, but we need to access it using the IP address. And as root, you use your root password. All right. Let me get into a web browser. i cancel this download because it's been downloading forever. Don't know why that server was so slow. All right, https colon slash slash 192.168.1.118 colon 10,000. I'm going to see your connection is not private, blah, blah, blah. That's because it doesn't have a certificate. And you see how the https is crossed out. It's fine. It's on your local network. You don't have a certificate for it. It's perfectly fine. Proceed to unsafe destination. Username is pi. And password is your password that we changed earlier. We're logging in, and now you're going to see a list of tools or a list of stuff that comes up on the side network, webmin, system, everything, everything that you want to see. And here you could actually configure the Raspberry Pi to do stuff without having to go in the command line. And you get presented with this dashboard how much memory you used, local disk space everything it's really cool I mean if you start adding new services and stuff like that you could use this to monitor or control it or modify the settings now what we need to do is actually add Samba now you're gonna see on the servers nothing comes up if I go to networking nothing comes up about Samba that's because we didn't install it yet and that's what we're gonna be doing next so next step is sudo app get install Samba and Samba dash common we're also going to need samba common bin okay after you installed um, the um, samba stuff you're going to notice, hey, I don't see anything here. Why didn't it load? That's because you have to refresh modules. When you refresh the modules, it's going to check what's new that you installed for us. It'll be Samba. And it's going to pick that up. And it should add it to a list. If you see my mouth moving, that's because I got a cough jar. I'm still coming down from a little sick. There you have it. Now it says Samba window file sharing. Now in this setting, you're going to see, first thing I'm going to check is Windows networking. And you should be on the work group. Most now newer days, nowadays new computers are on the work group. And um, you want to be Win Server. That's it. You don't really need to change anything else. You hit save now and you return to the list. Next thing is, now you want to create a new file share now if you're gonna be sharing your SD card you could just point to the directory that you want to share it to so in most cases it'll be slash home slash pi slash whatever you want that would be the home directory of your uh, SD card now if you're gonna be mounting a hard drive this is the next step that I'm gonna be showing you now we're gonna to have to list dev and we're going to look for anything that says SDA. SDA, I already have a USB hard drive plugged in. SDA is what we're looking for for a hard drive. Next thing what I'm going to do is, if you have a Windows hard drive, 
do I need an NTFS 3G? So we're gonna grab that. sudo app get install, if I could type, NTFS 3G. That will allow us to read and write off NTFS partitions. And most of you are probably using a Windows type hard drive with NTFS. If not, if you're using FAT32, you could probably just skip this step. All right, now that that's installed, I hate Cortana. He's, she's always popping up and blogging me. We're gonna go to a folder called Media and list to see if it's empty. If it is empty, I'm gonna do sudo make dir hdd. This applies to USB cards too. So if you stick in a USB, you're gonna see SDA1, SDA2, stuff like that. So what I'm gonna mount, I'm gonna do a sudo mount slash dev slash SDA2. And the reason why I'm doing two, you're not gonna see this, but this used to be a Windows hard drive, so it has multiple partitions. So that's why it has SDA1 and SDA2. SDA2 would be my primary partition when I was installing this operating system. Slash mount, I mean uh, media, slash HDD, that's the folder we created. Once that's done, you're gonna notice that it's green and it says HDD. And if I cd hdd, you're going to see a bunch of files. So let's clear that, clear screen on that. Go back and share name, we're going to call it pi share. Directory to share slash media slash hdd. Uh, automatically create, yes. These, you can leave this all fine and you're going to create it. After you created this share, everything's browsable, available, directory share, security and access controls. In here, it, yes, it's gonna be writable. Guest access, yes. And this is the lowest um, setting, meaning like it's not safe, but anybody on your same network could just access it. Hit save, you could do more detailed uh, make users for each person, etc, etc. But we're not gonna get into that. We're just gonna create our share. Now that that's all done, you go to Windows File Manager, slash slash 192.168.1.118. Now you see Pi Share, and you're gonna see folders. And that's the same exact things that we saw earlier in our Raspberry Pi. So there we have it, our network attached storage device on our Raspberry Pi. And we did it actually the easy way with the web admin system and not having to do all the coding in the back end inside all the command line foo and stuff like that. So if you guys enjoyed this and if you have any questions, please leave in the comments below and don't forget, hack till it hurts. Thanks for watching my video. Please take a moment to subscribe. It helps me a lot. And if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll post a link right here.